Hello devs! Bartek speaking. Welcome to Software Mansion React Native Labs. In this series, we are proving that it's possible to build a photo gallery app, such as Apple Photos or Google Photos, using just React Native. There are a few technical challenges ahead. Let's begin with finding the most effective solution to build a performant list of images. Michał, over to you. Thank you, Bartek. Michał here. Before we move on to tech details, let's take a closer look at how Apple and Google actually handle photo lists. Both apps feel smooth. You can scroll through hundreds of images with barely any luck. Everything loads instantly, animations are snappy, and there's no noticeable stutter, even on older devices. On Android, when scrolling, you might notice a minimal blur effect before the actual image loads. It's a smart trick to make things feel faster, even if there's a tiny delay underneath. Apple, on the other hand, pre-processes photos in the background. That's why everything feels instant. What we've got in both iOS and Android apps is some solid optimization. And the good news? You can build something similar using just React Native. By the end of this episode, your app's gonna look exactly like that. We start by reading photos from the device using Expo Media Library. It gives us access to the images on the phone. To speed up loading, we bash the images, loading them in smaller chunks, so the first photos appear faster. We got the photos and now we want to display them on the screen. Here we focus on two common approaches, React Native Build-in Image Component and Expo Image. In the latter, you can tweak the image loading process. For example, we use cache policy that improves both memory and disk usage and Android-specific RGB decoding format. Let's see how these two components work on a Google Pixel device. In the presented scenario, we load dozens of photos into a simple scroll view and observe the loading times. As you can see, Expo image loads faster, especially when the number of items grows. We share more details about comparing these two components in the article linked in the description below. It is also worth mentioning that when loading images, you can leverage placeholders, skeletons or blur hashes to make your app feel snappier. The main problem with the photos is their original size. At the moment, we load the images the default way, full resolution but it takes a serious toll on performance, especially on lower-end devices. We can address that problem and incorporate the MIP mapping technique. MIP maps are pre-calculated downscaled versions of the original images. Once we add them in, you can spot the difference right away. Downside of using MIP maps, though, is the process of generating them beforehand. It takes some time, but it definitely pays off. The next step is to choose the right list component. We are focusing on the three popular options, default flat list, flash list and legend list. We present to you the overview of each solution on iOS, high and low end Android devices. The default flat list works fine on top notch devices or for a smaller number of images, but you immediately see frame drops on budget phones when scrolling through the photos. On the other hand, Flashlist is optimized for large datasets and it's supposed to offer much smoother scrolling even on less performant devices. Indeed, scrolling is smooth, but you see some white spaces here and there that are filled in after a while. There is also Legendlist, another alternative that promises better performance, especially when handling dynamically sized items. It is a JavaScript-only package without any native dependencies, which is a major advantage for cross-platform development. We've tried each solution with more than 2,000 high-resolution images, and it turned out that the flash list is the best match in our case. You can find more about the results and tests we have performed in the article and code linked below. Voila! Our photo list is ready. The best part? It works across multiple platforms, from mobile, through web browsers, to TV devices. Basically, React Native's flexibility means you can write your code once and deploy it everywhere. Thanks, Michal. That's all for today. If you want to dive deeper, 
check out the article linked in the description below. And for more content like this, make sure to follow our channel where we share next steps of creating the app using just React Native. See you in the next episode. Bye!